how to change ugly situations through worship. Hallelujah. Do you know that most of you are already blessed even without prayer? That's the power of worship. That's what happens when we worship God. A life there will be many times you will face ugly situations. We don't pray for it, but they will come. Sometimes they come from the enemy, but whatever be the case, our God has the capacity to turn it around. He said, God inhabits the praises of Israel. And we are the Israel of today. By adoption, we have been engrafted into the family of Jacob. Second Chronicles chapter 20, beginning from verse 21. He appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness, as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Read with me verse 22. And when they began to sing and to pray, what did they begin to do? They began to sing and to pray. In the midst of trouble, you have been praying. Prayer is good. Worship is great. But worship and the word is great. Very, very great. Plus worship plus the word equals to victory. Hallelujah. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments. It's a trap. As you begin to live a life of praise, the Lord will fight your battle. Your enemies will go down for your sake. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Manser, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Manser, everyone helped to destroy another. What he says is that as they began to praise, God went into action. The enemies began to fight themselves. From this night, there will be commotion in witchcraft covens. Not because you prayed, but because you praised. Say, I will praise God. Prayer is most times selfish, but worship is selfless. Because in worship, you acknowledge him. In prayer, you acknowledge yourself. I don't know what you are facing in your life, but this is the solution. Trust me as I tell you this. This is the way out. Say, I have found the way out at last. And then you go on, incredible God. You know, I love the extraordinary strategies. If they call you that one, will your head not swell up? You know what I mean? You feel great. So when you praise him, you make him rise up. When you pray, he sits down to live. <laughs> Hallelujah. He gets up. He said, who is calling me there? You don't know how to play. You know, the Igbos have a very powerful worship and praise. Now listen, do you know how to play that oja? Do it, let's see. You know how to do that? Just, just a few seconds and let me preach and then we go. You were hiding. Come and do it. Where are they? Where is Paul? Oh yeah, come on. You were doing the Igbo dance. Now do it again. Mm -hmm. Now, when you praise God this way, why would it not rise? Come, because God is about to do something in your life. Hurry. Uh-huh. That's our God in action. He has something. Uh -huh. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Yes. Let's praise him. Let's praise his God. That's how they do it. Okay, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I just used two of you as examples, but let this be the life you live all the time. But I'm showing you what God can do when you learn to praise Him. You know what? When you begin to dance, you forget your problem. You give the problem to who can handle the problem. The question is, is what can you do on your own? Nothing. Nothing. So you just learn, God, this is overwhelming. 
but it's not beyond you. I'm giving it over to you. That's why for two Sundays, I want to, I, I try to teach you that you should equally learn how to address your problems with worship. Not just prayer every day. You've gone to how many camps? Nothing has changed. Now go to the true camp. The camp where you and God will settle the matter. You wake up in your room and you say, Father, I prayed. I didn't get answer. But now I'm going to dance. I will worship you until you move. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. Why? Pray. And they destroyed the army of Seir. They began attacking each other. 24. So when the army of Judah arrived at the point at the lookout point in the wilderness all they saw were dead bodies on the ground did they fight no who did the fight god why did god do the fight because they praise him if you can thank him for yesterday you secure tomorrow you want you are crying about tomorrow you don't know whether jesus will come today this is the day you have celebrated enjoy your today while you are hoping for a better tomorrow let's go back there thank you not a single one of the enemy escaped as you praise him today those who have fought you since you were born they will not escape your fire those who shouted a better amen is happening for you now Verse 25, King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. They found vast amounts of equipment, clothing, and other valuable more than they could carry. There was so much plunder that it took them three days to collect it all. Give the Lord a big clap, my friend. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verses 29 and 30, let's read that and then we move on. When all the surrounding kingdoms heard that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came over them. Lift up your head. From today, when the wicked sees you, they will be afraid of your God. May our God strike fears in the heart of our enemies in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 30, so Jehoshaphat's kingdom, so Pastor Chris's ministry, so Pastor Chris's business was at peace. Say my life at peace. Marriage at peace. Everything about me at peace. Why? For God had given him rest on every side. Lift up your head. In your business, in your marriage, in every part of your life. My God will give you rest. You shall have rest. Thank you, Lord. I love Jesus. So how do you praise and get results? Number one, by faith. By what? Faith. By faith in God. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. Give me a newer translation here of anything. All things are possible. He said, when, he said, what do you mean? I can. If I can, Jesus asked. Anything. Somebody say anything. Is possible if a person believes. Your breakthrough is possible. That I, I want you to be sure you are here on Wednesday when I'll be talking about part two of why you should not lose hope. Sometimes God has to hide you for a while. And if you don't know how you oppress, you'll think that your hiding period is your failing period. When it was not time for Moses to show up, where did God hide him? He hid him in the house of those who needed to kill him. So his enemies paid for his school, trained him until it was time. If you are clapping, you don't have leprosy, clap it. Clap. Do you know why? Those lepers are crying, Lord, if I can have fingers, I will clap for you every day. So if you have full fingers, clap for the Lord. And give him a shout if you care there. Hallelujah. I want to show you something. Make sure you listen. When you go into praise, you must have faith that it's going to work. What you don't believe in cannot deliver anything good to you in the kingdom. If thou canst believe, marriage is possible. Financial breakthrough is possible. Having a child is possible. Say all things are possible for me because I'm a believer. The word believe is translated from the Greek word pistio. It means to think to be true. That's to say you think that when I pray, something must happen. To be persuaded of, to trust, as able to either to aid either in obtaining or in doing something. To accept something as true. I believe that when I pray, the God who delivered Israel will deliver me. Faith is what makes any principle deliver in the kingdom. 
in Matthew 9 verse 29 he said according to your faith so be it unto you